Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Today we'll be going over my top five favorite random pathology facts. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. If you've been watching my videos, you know by now what a huge nerd I am and how passionate I am about pathology. In today's video, I thought it might be fun to share with you my top five favorite random pathology facts that at least I find interesting. They're not necessarily in any order, but I'll count them down to keep things exciting. Number five, what's up dog one? In pathology and cell biology, it seems like we enjoy being as confusing as possible when naming things. For instance, SMARC-B1 and INI1 are two names for the same gene. What do those even mean? That's why I like DOG1. DOG1 is a membrane receptor and it stands for discovered on GIST. Why? Because it was discovered on GIST. GIST stands for gastrointestinal stromal tumor. GISTs are tumors that occur in the stomach or small intestines of adults. Guess where the DOG1 receptor was discovered? On the GIST tumor cells. It just makes sense. DOG1 is also a helpful marker for a cynic cell carcinoma, a salivary carcinoma that we can see as oral pathologists. Number four, don't let special stains bug you. I mentioned this in my intro to microscopy video, but I still think it's a really fun fact. The most common stains for our microscope slides are hematoxylin and eosin, aka H and E. Sometimes we require different stains to give us different information. One of these special stains is called mucicarmine, which we use to highlight mucus cells. A component of this stain is created by crushing the dried bodies of female cochineal insects known as coccus cacti. This carmine is also used in fabric dyes, food dye, and cosmetics. This isn't the only interesting special stain. Saffron can also be used as a stain to differentiate between bone and dense fibrous connective tissue. But due to the scarcity and expense of saffron, this stain isn't widely used. Number three, Cowden syndrome, honoring a patient. In medicine, we love to use eponyms. I feel very strongly about eponyms as I've alluded to in past videos. I may create a whole rant style video no one asked for sharing my opinion on them, but for this video, there is one eponym that I can get behind and that is Cowden syndrome. Eponym, by the way, is when something is named after a person. Cowden syndrome is named after Rachel Cowden, a 20 year old patient who had multiple findings, including oral papillomas, thyroid adenomas, breast cancer, and central nervous system changes. Rachel's mother also had breast cancer at a young age, and many other family members had similar findings. Thus, doctors Kenneth Lloyd and Macy Dennis put together the puzzle pieces and discovered this syndrome. They named the constellation of findings after Rachel Cowden and her family, and called it Cowden syndrome. This syndrome is now considered a part of a group of syndromes caused by a mutation of the P10 gene known as P10 hamartoma syndromes. I won't get too far into these syndromes today and we'll save it for a future syndrome series video, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Unfortunately, Miss Cowden would eventually die of her bilateral breast cancer, a component of this syndrome, at a very young age, but her memory and her family's contribution to medical knowledge lives on today. Cowden syndrome, of course, isn't the only disease named after a patient. Famously, Lou Gehrig disease is named after the famous baseball player. But it is one that we often don't realize is named for a patient. I think it is a really patient forward and selfless thing for the physicians to name this condition in honor of this patient and her family's struggle. Number two, the president's secret cancer. The year is 1893 and President Grover Cleveland is two months into his second term when one day he wakes up and feels a rough mass on the roof of his mouth. 
His friend and personal physician, Dr. Robert M. O'Reilly, examined his mouth and found what he described as an ulcerative surface nearly as large as a quarter with cauliflower granulations and crater edges with at least one sinus extending to the bone. Dr. O'Reilly suspected malignancy. A biopsy was performed and sent anonymously to John Hopkins, where pathologist Dr. William Welch described a epithelioma, which is what we would now call a carcinoma. With concerns of disclosing his condition to the public, President Cleveland and a group of doctors boarded a yacht off the shores of Manhattan, where President Cleveland underwent a partial maxillectomy on board the yacht. Two weeks later at follow-up, it was determined that there was a positive margin and the president underwent a second revision surgery aboard the yacht. The press was told that the president had a few extractions, which was true, I guess, but he also had a large portion of his palate and maxilla removed too. How was the president able to hide this from the public? Well, a dentist named Dr. Casson Church created an obturator to fill in the surgical defect. Obturators are similar to dentures, but have extensions that allow them to essentially plug the hole from a cancer surgery. Obturators help restore a patient's ability to speak and eat properly, and can also help restore normal appearance. In 1980, the original tumor from 1893, which was kept in alcohol at the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia, was examined and determined to be a verrucous carcinoma. Just goes to show you that even presidents can get oral cancer, and everyone, president or not, should undergo routine oral cancer screenings. Number one, hibernoma, an aptly named tumor. Hibernomas are tumors of brown fat. Brown fat is a naturally occurring tissue type that helps with temperature regulation. It decreases in humans with age. You can see in this photo, Mike, that the cells have a bunch of pink dots. These pink dots are mitochondria, which we all remember are the powerhouse of the cell from our middle school science courses. The extra mitochondria produce energy, which creates heat. Brown fat is stored in animals before hibernation to help them stay warm in the winter, which is why these tumors or collections of brown fat are called hibernomas. I just think that the name is really clever and a really great way to remember this entity. So there you have it, my top five pathology fun facts. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like below and share it with someone else who may enjoy my nerdy knowledge. Thanks again for watching and be well.